This week, we're taking a look at an Autobot who's been characterised in some very different ways over the years, who's found fame in different countries for some very different reasons. These are the basics on Chrome Dome. The original Chrome Dome toy was released in 1987 and transformed into a Cybertronian car. He was characterised as a scholarly Autobot computer programmer, who once worked at the Cybertronian Institute for Higher Programming until it was destroyed by the Decepticons, after which he put his skills to use for the war effort, reprogramming his fellow Autobots to fight smarter, not harder. Chrome Dome was a headmaster, a kind of transformer whose head disconnected and transformed into a small partner minifigure that could ride in the larger figure's vehicle mode cockpit. Chrome Dome's partner was an alien from the planet Nebulos named Stylor, a high society dandy more concerned with fashion than fighting, who viewed Chrome Dome as a stuffy academic. The story of how Chrome Dome became a Headmaster was told in both Marvel's Headmasters comic book miniseries and the three-part finale of the Transformers animated series The Rebirth, which each put their own spin on the idea. In the comic, Chrome Dome became disillusioned by the war and joined a crew of Autobots led by Fortress Maximus, who left Cybertron in search of a peaceful new life on Nebulos. They initially came into conflict with the native Nebulans, until Chrome Dome and a few others surrendered themselves to the Nebulans as a show of good faith. When the Decepticons subsequently arrived on the planet, the Autobots and Nebulans bonded together as headmasters to fight them. In the cartoon, on the other hand, Chrome Dome was among the Autobots aboard a shuttle that was unintentionally blasted across the universe to Nebulos by a bolt of plasma energy. There, they allied with a group of Nebulan rebels to become headmasters and fight both the Decepticons and Nebulos's evil rulers. But one thing that both cartoon and comic had in common was that Chrome Dome got very little to do in either of them. Out of all the original Autobot headmasters, Chrome Dome was easily the most overlooked by classic Western media. After his introduction, he would make only a few minor appearances in the regular monthly comic and play brief supporting roles in a couple of stories published in the United Kingdom. But things were very different in Japan, where the rebirth wasn't aired and instead an original Japanese animated series, Transformers The Headmasters, was produced to tell the Headmaster story. For this series, Chrome Dome's entire personality was reinvented. Instead of a reserved scholar, he was a fiery-tempered young warrior with a heart that burned for justice. But that wasn't all that was different about him, as the Headmaster concept itself was dramatically reimagined for the Japanese market. In this version of the story, there was no Stylor. Instead, the small headmaster figure was Chrome Dome himself, who connected to and controlled a larger, lifeless robot body. He was a Transformer who left Cybertron millions of years ago as part of a group of refugees seeking to escape the war, who wound up crashing on the planet Master. To survive on this dangerous world, the small robots built full-size bodies for themselves, called Transtectors to which they connected as heads. An impulsive, passionate young bot, Chrome Dome was the field leader of the Autobot Headmasters and was essentially the main character of the cartoon, which followed his team as they left Master to join the Autobots on Cybertron and help defend the galaxy against the threat of the Decepticon Headmasters. The series saw Chrome Dome forge a rivalry with the Decepticon ninja Sixshot, who was responsible for killing Chrome Dome's best friends, Jack and Abel. As such a major character, Chrome Dome enjoyed a lot more attention in Japan than he did in the West, with additional merchandise being produced of him and appearances in tie-in media like the Headmaster's manga and video game. He would even pop up for cameo appearances in the sequel cartoon Super God Master Force and its accompanying manga. But outside of Japan, 
there really was almost nothing to say about Chrome Dome for a very long time. Until the 2010s, when he joined the cast of IDW Publishing's Transformers comic books and was propelled to a new level of popularity with English-speaking fandom. Chrome Dome was a main cast member in IDW's 2012 series, More Than Meets the Eye. Now, he wasn't a headmaster in this series. Rather, the comic expanded on his original function as a computer programmer and explored what that meant for a robotic race with computer brains, casting Chrome Dome as a kind of neuroscientist called a nemosurgeon, able to interface with other Transformers' brains via a set of needles in his fingers and read and rewrite their memories. The dangerous and addictive nature of this ability, coupled with the morally questionable way Cybertron's government forced him to use it during the war, weighed heavily on Chrome Dome's conscience, and he resolved to give it up after he met and fell in love with Autobot archivist Rewind, the landmark first instance of a gay relationship in American Transformers media. Sadly, giving up Nemo surgery wasn't easy, with circumstances contriving to keep Chrome Dome using it, and tragedy eventually struck when a misjudged interface led to Chrome Dome accidentally allowing the terrifying Decepticon Overlord to escape from captivity, and to rewind, sacrificing his life to stop his rampage. To spare himself the pain of loss, Chrome Dome almost Nemo surgically removed his own memories of rewind until a farewell message Rewind had recorded convinced him not to at the last minute. And, in time, it was discovered that before Rewind had died, a duplicate of him had been created in a teleportation accident, allowing Chrome Dome to reunite with his lost love and live happily ever after. The fresh popularity IDW brought Chrome Dome soon led to new toys of the character being produced for the first time in nearly 30 years. The first was released through the Transformers Collectors Club in 2014, a retool and recolor of the Transformers Prime Wheeljack figure, with a head based on Chrome Dome's appearance in IDW's comics. Like the IDW version of the character, this figure wasn't a headmaster, but did still come with Stylor, who now transformed into a crossbow for Chrome Dome to wield. This was followed a few years later by a new mass market figure in 2016's Titan's Return toy line. This figure was a working headmaster, with Stylor transforming into a head once again based on IDW's design. And yes, there were also contemporary new Rewind figures for both of these toys to canoodle with. The Titan's Return figure was released in Japan as part of the Transformers Legends toy line, with a new head based on Chrome Dome's look from the Headmaster's cartoon. The comedic manga that came packed in with the figure continued the Japanese version of Chrome Dome's story after the cartoon, following him as he found a new passion in life as a manga artist. The IDW-styled head would be sold separately in Japan, marketed as Stylor, who the manga showed briefly crossing dimensions to team up with the Japanese Chrome Dome in a battle against Scorponok. Most recently, the Titan's Return figure was released by Hasbro one more time in 2020 as part of the Retro Headmasters line, now sporting the head from the Legends version of the figure. From forgotten headmaster, to leading man in Japan, to modern-day comic book stardom, Chrome Dome's lived three very different lives, proving that no matter what version of a Transformer you're most familiar with, there's always more to them than meets the eye. And those are the basics on Chrome Dome. Stuffy nerd, fiery youngster, guilty Nemo surgeon, which one's your favourite? If you've enjoyed this video, subscribe and check out nearly 150 more about Transformers characters, series, history and lore, and get early access to new episodes by supporting the series on Patreon.